Back when I used to write screenplays, Shane Black was one of my heroes. He's written some of my favorite movies and created some of my most favorite characters. Did he do it again? Directed by Tony Scott, starring Bruce Willis and Damon Wayans. Here is The Last Boy Scout. By the way, I love this opening. It starts strong and I'm actually ready for some football. It's raining and we're in the middle of an intense football game. Billy Cole is having a bad night and he's having gambling problems. There's a lot of money riding on this game tonight. This is Sheldon Marconi, the owner of the team. I'm sure he won't turn out to be a bad guy. But Billy Cole will save the game. Nothing a few pills can't handle. Drugs are bad. You shouldn't do drugs. Yeah, he's totally fine. I'm telling you, he's okay. Is this the face of doubt? Looks like he's gonna make it, but defense is up. Desperate, his play gets a little extreme. You thought Theismann had a bad day. Um... Touchdown? Hey, life up, bitch. You don't see that in the beer commercials. I like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer, and less. Now let's meet our hero. Bruce Willis plays Joe Hollenbeck, a down-on-his-luck detective. Honestly, when are Hollywood detectives ever happy? I stand corrected. Nobody likes you. Everybody hates you. Daily Affirmations with Bruce Willis. Joe hates himself. Is that supposed to make the audience like him? So our initial feeling about our main hero shouldn't really be pity. Joe comes home early to find out his wife is screwing his friend, a fellow private eye. <laughs> hey, at least he still has a job for him. You got that address for me? Huh? A surveillance job. But the plot thickens when his friend's car experiences a slight explosion. So, Samsung makes cars now. Who the fuck did this, Joe? Mr. Rogers. I'm not the one who hates you, Joe. You're the one who hates you. And I get to live with myself 24 hours a day. Our hero, ladies and gentlemen. The job he was given takes him to Corey, a young stripper waitress played by Halle Berry. She's in some kind of trouble. Here's her boyfriend, disgraced ex-football player Jimmy Dix, played by Damon Wayans. Oh, so you know who I am? James Alexander Dix, quarterback for the LA Stallions, 89-90. Banned from the league on allegations of drug abuse. Another tragic tale of wasted youth. As he waits for his client, he's knocked out by some goons, but he escapes. But he's too late to save his client. Now Joe and Jimmy are reluctantly working together to solve Corey's murder. So now we have a partnership that's trying to be an edgy Riggs and Murtaugh, which might have pulled it off had they better chemistry. You don't believe in love? Yeah, I believe in love. I believe in cancer. What, they're both diseases? Something like that. Now it seems Corey was blackmailing some pretty bad people. They go through Corey's place looking for clues. Jimmy finds his pill stash and an incriminating tape. 10 to 1, this is what they were looking for. Fast forward. No, don't, it ain't the tape! Fast forward, it's the fucking tape! Make that had an incriminating tape. We finally meet Joe's daughter, Darian, played by Danielle Harris. I don't care. You're an asshole. Oh, and she hates Joe, too. Really, does anyone like each other in this movie? Joe finds out about Jimmy's pill dependency. Pot, meet Kettle. When you're done feeling sorry for yourself, the front door's that way. Aw, they had such potential. I know I'm old and all, but I don't remember that being in fashion. Seemingly at random, Jimmy is hassled on the street. It's a good thing he's addicted to all those painkillers, am I right? Joe is captured and taken from his home by the bad guys, led by Milo, played by Taylor Negrin. Good guy meets bad guy. Smoking's bad, okay? See? 
I can't lie, that was fucking awesome. Well, look who turned out to be a bad guy. Well, duh. You think you're so fucking cool, don't you? Scared? Shit. You? More or less. From here, it's a race to prevent an assassination, rescue Joe's daughter, and save the day. It ends with Joe's family being cool again, a blooming partnership, and the promise of a sequel we're still waiting for. First of all, this movie starts out feeling very angry and cynical. Everyone is just so nasty. The entire movie feels like a modern noir film. Start with the anti-hero. He may not be saving cats from trees, but ultimately he does the right thing. You're an asshole. His family is far from perfect, but maybe that's the point. Maybe dysfunction is becoming more relatable than the Bradys or Cleavers, and it's becoming the new norm. Joe is hard to like, but it's not impossible. He's down on his luck, pissed off, and cynical to the extreme when we meet him. Not unlike another Shane Black character. Ever get the feeling so many characters in movies would be improved with a puppy? That missing chemistry? It was there by the end. We watched it grow. At first I didn't care about Joe or Jimmy, but in the end, I was interested. Milo was a cool character. Something about an overly polite psychopath that just makes him seem so much more dangerous. This was the first spec script that's an unsolicited screenplay that sold for a million dollars. Shane Black had written Lethal Weapon and Monster Squad, so he already had some cred. Too bad the writing in this movie just didn't seem quite up to par. I would like to hear you scream. Play some rap music. Even the dialogue at times didn't seem to be Black's A-game, which is probably mostly true. There were troubles during production, which resulted in large portions being rewritten and changed by Willis and Scott. What can I say? It's a 90s action movie that earns its R rating. Shooting, stabbing, tasing, punching, blowing things up, it's a fun movie. But you can sit down and enjoy it just the same. You just may need a cigarette afterwards. And that was The Last Boy Scout. I give it a 3 out of 5. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, give a thumbs up, subscribe, you know you want to. And leave a comment below. This is the newbie. Thanks for watching.